Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Scrap Mechanic, and today we're going to be exploring the power of wedges. L literally, like wedge-powered things. Things that are powered by wedges. Wedge power. And this is inspired by this creation right here, which is a wedge-powered creation. The first of its kind that I've seen. Um, and this was made by Dakotarts 1984. I featured this in a video a little while ago. And uh, the really awesome thing about it is it literally uses wedges and only wedges to provide power to the wheels by pushing the wedges against the wheels, creating this force that shouldn't exist in real life, but does exist in scrap mechanic just because that's, I guess, that's how powerful wedges are. So when I saw that initially, I was I, I was like, I want, I want to explore that deeper, but uh, that wasn't the video for it. This, however, this is the video for it. So I want to explore this concept more fully using different sized wheels, using different sized wedges, and maybe even using some objects that aren't wedges just to see what happens and see if there's a difference between wedge power and brick power, dare I say. It's going to be really embarrassing if bricks end up being better for this. Okay, so let's do some wedge science. We're gonna set up some experiments here. All right, so we're gonna have a small wheel to experiment with. We're gonna have a large wheel to experiment with. Let's see if things that aren't wheels are also affected by this. So let's try like a pipe piece. It's gonna have to be something round because it has to be able to turn against whatever is pushing into it. Non-round objects aren't gonna do too well with that, I don't think. All right, so in case you weren't already aware of what was going on there, if you missed the initial episode, uh, this is essentially what is happening. So as you can see, as this wedge applies pressure to this wheel, this whale, this wheel on a free-floating unpowered bearing, it creates uh, a turning force. And as you can see, it's actually a, quite a bit of force. How fast is it gonna be able to spin that? Oh, it's spinning this the opposite way? Well, that's interesting, isn't it? So then I assume as I get rid of this, it's gonna, if it, as I get rid of more of this, it should spin fat. What? Okay, physics. Physics is being interesting here, isn't it? Wait, all right, well, now what happens if I apply it again? Okay. Okay, these are not the results I was expecting at all. We might be discovering forces never before measured. All right, uh, here, let's try this again. What is going on? It's so fast all of a sudden. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Slow down, slow down, slow down. There we go. All right, so I decided to add concrete and have it be a little bit further from the center. So it should be a little bit harder to rotate. All right, so that's what we're looking at. But I get the feeling that if we do it again, I had a feeling it was going to change. I don't understand why that does that. But you know what? I'm actually just gonna build a handful of experiments here. So we've got that. Let's try um, a different type of wheel. All right, can this work just as well with a big wheel like this? Oh my goodness, look at that. We could get some really nice, we could get some really nice speed off of this. All right, now let's add the same amount of weight to this wheel, even though the wheel itself is heavier. But let's just see. That is so weird that applying it a second time makes it seem to go so much faster. That's kind of, it's good information to know though, isn't it? All right, so now out of curiosity, if I use a, um, a non-wedge, let's use a block and see if the block uh, has a similar or different effect on this. It goes backwards? And it's, it's so much slower. Look at it, it doesn't have the same effect where it makes it go faster. That is so weird that it goes backwards. See, we're getting, these are some very interesting results here. These are some fun science experiments. Okay, so now let, let's just confirm. If we go back to wedge, does it reverse the direction again? It does, and it's so, see? This just kind of reconfirms that wedges are just more powerful. They're just a more powerful shape. All right, what about um, a non-wheel? Let's go ahead and try a pipe piece here. And let's see how this goes. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, that's definitely going. That is definitely going. That seems to be going pretty fast, actually. Here, let's slow it down. All right, let's see how that goes. Can you turn that? This is going backwards, too. 
Look how fast. All right, I got, I'm gonna build another one to see if there's consistency. Do pipes always go backwards or rolling into the wedge? All right, that one does seem to be going backwards. More pressure, more pressure doesn't seem to be making a difference. Okay, now I'm confused. What? Why is this one so much slower than this one? There's only one difference here, and that difference is that I have this extending out by a block like this. All right, let's see if this goes faster now. That is actually very, very strange. What if I have this go a couple of blocks outwards before doing this? All right, now let's see what happens. Wait, wait, no, no, you're going the wrong way now. What is this? No, no, stop, stop rotating that way. All right, now let's see what happens. Oh, here it goes. Okay, this is interesting. It actually seems like either the more weight we have on this or it's the farther away from the pressure point, it increases the speed. Let's test this out by adding more weight, um, but closer to where we are applying pressure. All right, I've added more weight to this thing and it is a lot slower. Okay, so then if I put that same weight way out here, it goes really fast. That to me is really, really strange. The distance away from the bearing actually increases the speed. Is that the same for a wheel like this? Now let's see how fast you end up spinning. All right, well, this is interesting. It's not quite fast anymore, is it? Okay, so now let's try different types of wedges. So let's compare the speed. I'm gonna add some more weight on this thing in hopes that I'm gonna slow it down a bit. Okay, it's, it's too fat. It's too fast to keep track of. It seems like it's even faster now. All right, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just stop doing this, stop. <laughs> there we go. So let's try this one. I'm really curious. That one goes in the opposite direction. This is almost behaving more like a brick behaves. The more subtle angle seems to negatively affect it. Or, oh, no, but then you go back. What if I decrease this by a block? How about another block? Nope, now it's not even making contact anymore. All right, that's interesting. So then what about this wedge? This should have the same effect because it's the same shape. It's just a different type of wedge. Um, so this one, I don't think I'll be able to... Oh, okay. If I put it here, what is this going to do? Okay, it's going in that direction. That doesn't seem to really have a big effect. Yeah, not at all. But what if I make it go down a little bit like this? Okay, yeah, these bigger wedges seem to be pretty bad for this, but let's try, here, get this out of here. Let's try the biggest wedge of them all, but we're gonna actually put the wheel on it to fit this. There we go. All right, so now let's see. Okay, yeah, bigger wedges do not equal bigger power. It really seems like the standard 45 degree wedge is the most effective wedge for wedge power. The most effective shape for that matter. Like, oh, actually, let's try, um, let's try mug. All right, now let's see what happens. Oh, gotta go a little bit further. All right, there we go. Okay, it seems kind of like brick power. So let's replace this with a wedge again. All right, so then doing wedge again. Oh, gotta make it go a little bit more now. All right, I think that pretty much settles the superior shape because we've tried brick, we've tried um, circle or cylinder with the mug, and we've done wedge and nothing has met with this amount of power other than the wedge. What about more wedges? So I'm gonna have four wedges like this and then I'm gonna have this set up with four uh, pipe pieces. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, that I believe is a lot faster. Yeah, that is actually, that is a lot faster. We can increase our wedge power with more wedges. I mean, that sounds obvious, but the way that these experiments have been going, it's hard to assume anything is gonna be right, you know? <laughs> Common sense is out the window with these kind of experiments. What if the wedge is like this? Okay, yeah, nope, that ruins it, that ruins it. You have to have the actual, the wedge part, the angle needs to 
rest against the wheel. All right, so I think uh, now I have the information I need. I, I'm gonna have a rear axle like this, and we're just gonna have a bunch of wedges push into some pipes that are then gonna power the wheels out on the ends. And that's gonna be the rear axle and the front wheels are gonna be unpowered and they're just going to turn the vehicle. Yep, so if my experiments have taught me anything, it is that these wedges should give us a decent amount of power here. All right, before I build the rest of the car, let's just do a quick test to make sure that this even works. Okay, and here we go. All right, that seems to be trying to, I mean, it rotated, right? If it rotates, that's a good sign. Oh, I made a mistake. I made a terrible mistake. I should not, <laughs> these wheels are not supposed to have free bearings. I'm so used to putting bearings right before the wheels because the bearings that are being powered are these ones from the wedges. There we go. All right, that should be, that should just, that should work. All right, so this is gonna be the sole source of power right here. We've created our wedge power mechanism. Now let's just build the rest of the car on top of this. All right, here we go. It's super basic just for experimental purposes. But as you can see with my connection tool here, there's no engine. The only thing that is hooked up is a uh, seat to the steering and to the switch, which is hooked up into the pistons. I'm a little bit concerned that the amount of weight I added on top of this is gonna affect things, but we'll see what happened. All right, here we go in three, two, one, go wedges. Wed wedge power, wedge. All right, maybe I just gotta like, you know, get it, just get it started. Just maybe, um, hold, hold on a second. Maybe if I just give it a little bit of a nudge like that, it just a little bit, hold on, let me try. There we go. Come on, wedges. Wet. Do your. Why you're not working no more? The wedges. They're not working. Okay, we're gonna try smaller wheels. Okay, here we go. Oh, we're going. We're going. We're we're stopping. We we stopped. Okay. All right. What if I lift this up? Okay. Now look at how much power it suddenly has. So it's. Wait a minute. What? Look at that, that can barely turn anything right now. Why is this so much, what, what's different? What's different about this? Oh, what if it's the suspension? Okay, okay, all right, all right, we're gonna delete that. We're just gonna add a couple of blocks in here and then we're just gonna weld it right back up. Okay, now. All right, all right. We were dealing with a big handicap. The suspension changes the physics entirely. All right, hook this back up. Are we ready? And three, two, one, wedge power. Why, why are you disappointing me? It doesn't like the big wheels. Come on, why, why are you not doing it? Why is this not working? I just, you have so much power. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go. Okay. This is something. This is some decent cruising speed. Is it? It's, it's faster than walking, but it is not faster than sprinting. It's a wedge powered car right now. We got that. But my experiments gave me higher hopes for this. I don't know. Maybe it's because I also have front suspension. Let's just, maybe, maybe these types of creations, maybe wedge power just isn't made for suspension. All right, here we go. No suspension, wedge power, car. Oh, this, it needs to start up again. <laughs> it's like, it's like one of those old fashioned cars where you gotta crank the motor and then it gets going or like a plane or something. Okay, it does not seem to have made a difference having the, uh, the suspension removed entirely. Ooh, ooh, I got an idea. I got an idea on how to potentially increase the power going into this thing. What if I take this, duplicate it, and then weld it upside down to the other side. So now these wedges are gonna be coming in at opposite angles from opposite directions. Hopefully, you know, increasing the amount of power that is being transferred to the axle. I don't know, let's see how this looks. Oh! <gasps> This is the first time I've started from a standstill without having to hit it, but it seems slower. How odd. It was able to give us an initial push unlike the other version, but this one is slower somehow? Yeah, like look, I can walk faster than this version. So then presumably if I just turn these ones off, 
it should start going faster. Because now those... Oh, yeah, it is. Look at it. Now I can't walk. I can't catch up to it walking now. This is so weird. This is really unexpected results. You know, I'm just going to give separate controls for these ones. All right, now we can control them independently. So here's one. Nothing happens. Here's the second one. Nothing happens. If I do both, we start going very slowly. And then if I release the back one, we will start actually picking up speed. Look at that. So then am I going to slow down if I introduce the first one again? Yeah, it slows me down. What if I have just the back one? Okay. I mean, the back one also makes me go fa Just having one makes me go faster, but having two gives me the ability to start going from a standstill. This is such a weird power that we are dealing with in the scrap mechanic world. I don't think we fully understand the power of wedges yet. I think there's a lot to be discovered about the power of wedges. All right, so now let's try to make ourselves go faster by cutting out some weight. We should pick up some... Well, that was stupid. All right, there we go. I took a lot of weight off of this thing. Does it feel like we're going faster? Or let's see. Oh, look at this. It's about the same speed as sprinting now. Actually, it's slightly faster than sprinting. <gasps> oh, hold on, hold on. We need to turn away from this thing. We actually picked up enough speed to kind of be worth it. So yeah, I think officially we... Oh, uh, those are from a previous video. Oh no, I can't catch... Oh, no, 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 come back. I actually can't catch up to it now. I haven't saved it either. It's going to hit the train tracks. It's going to hit the train tracks and I'll be able to catch up to it. Please. See, this is the sign of a successful creation here. If it can run away from you and you can't catch up to it, uh, that means you've created something worth driving. Oh, you know what I just realized? This is a two-speed vehicle now. Because I can go this fast, and then if I uh, activate the other wedges, look at this. It slows us down into a slower cruising speed. We still get the forward consistent speed, and this keeps us at about walking speed. Like, pretty much exactly matching walking speed. That's kind of awesome. And if I want to go faster, I just release one of the wedges. And then, look at that. We are picking up speed. This actually turned out to be way more cool of a concept than I thought it was going to be. We have a two-speed wedge transmission, basically. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we don't actually have brakes, which is kind of ironic because this is usually how brakes would work with brake pads. Actually, you know what I'm thinking is we can probably use the same exact concept, but we can use bricks as uh, brakes. So if we do this, I don't, I don't know if this is going to work as intended, but let's give it a try. All right, so we're going forward. And then if we want to brake... We do this. It actually, it works to an, oh, okay. Now we're going backwards a little bit. That's interesting. I do this. That definitely works as a break. That's really cool. So now we have a two speed wedge transmission and we have braking power, or I guess you could call it bricking power. Oh, you know what? The concrete slab block actually has the most friction. So let's see if that works better as a brake. Activate brake. Eh, it doesn't really seem to make a difference on which one you use. It's not the best brake either. It's pretty slow braking power. All right, but here it is. My very own two-speed wedge-powered engine, pretty much. I think we've learned a lot from our science experiments here that uh, the 45 degree standard wedge is the most powerful wedge of them all. And uh, more wedges, I guess, does equal more power. I feel like there's still a lot to be discovered about wedge power. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know down in the comments below. And also a reminder, in case you weren't aware, uh, Wedge Gang merch is available on the new merch store. So go ahead and check that out down in the description below. You can use code WEDGE for this month only if you want to get 15% off everything on the store. If you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more stuff on the channel that you can check out right here on the end screen. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.